No trespassing, danger, peligro. Live bombs, penalty for violation of danger zone, up to 500 fine and or six months in jail. Oh. Nu är det vakna om morgonen, klockan eh, halv sex, kvart på sex. Så är det mycket fuleliv här ute. Det är så fantastiskt, helt fantastiskt. Bara, bara hör. Är det inte fantastiskt? Helt obeskrivligt fantastiskt. Enaste man ut på den uh, intercoastal waterway. Wow. Wow. Är så är så privilegierat att vara i dessa surroundings. Helt utrolig fantastisk. Wow. Jag måste se att uh, the Alligator River är med en insjö en river. Det är ganska brett. Så jag är väldigt tacksamlig och padla detta i uh, icke uvär. Stilla och fin. Okay, snart uh, sätter jag målet lite mot uh, Elizabeth Marina. Det kommer till att bli en ganska lång kristning. Uh, uh, Ta mig minst uh, i jag kan tänka mig fyra, fyra timer över, så ja, det är gryn tidlig. Um, jag sätter i farten nå. Okej, okay. jag är i uh, Elizabeth City och uh, ska bo på en uh, Christian University. Det var det fina stället, så går det bra, tänker jag. Kämpigt. Mm. What time do you guys leave tomorrow? 
Yeah. They have breakfast here too. So you can have breakfast. Yeah, you can go across the street to the cafeteria and have breakfast for like ten dollars. It's all you can eat for breakfast. They get six in breakfast. Right? Mm -hmm. well, wait a minute, brunch on Saturdays. Today's fish day. Okay, today I head for the Dismal Swamp, um, 80 miles, do it in two sections, alligators, bobcats, huge lizards, uh, moccasin snakes, the whole gamut. I'm going to be looking forward to it. Here I go. There goes Mark, heading to the sunset rise. Okay, here it's a bit spooky, a bit spooky. Okay, I got Bill here. Where are you from, Bill? Virginia Beach. And now you're paddling with me, and where are we? We're in South Mills, North Carolina. We're paddling to Chesapeake, Virginia. Good stuff. Okay, it's uh, Sunday, nice day, heading from uh, the Dismal Swamp Service Center to Virginia. I'll be in Norfolk today, moving forward up the Dismal Swamp Canal, just beautiful. Norfolk Naval Shipyard.
I've been in my kayak now over six hours. I wanted to uh, overnight at Plum Island. I got to the island and there's all these signs, no trespassing, bombs, penalty $500 or six months in jail. And now I've been paddling over an hour and I'm still in the bomb zone. Can you believe it? Okay, I gotta get a move on before sun goes down. I gotta find a place. Maybe the next town. Oh. In the springtime of the year, I overheard a sailor boy, likewise a maiden fair. Okay, uh, last night, uh, I had to paddle next to two, uh, two and a half hours uh, because of all the bombs on land. I made it before the, just as the sun was going down, I found a beach, no trespassing, but I put my tent up anyways. A lady came out and asked me if I needed help. I said, no, I'm fine, as long as I can put my tent up. She says, no problem, and uh, I made it. What a day, what a day. Plum Tree Island National Wildlife Refuge is a refuge for birds, but definitely not for kayakers. Signs with bombs, explosives, fines, sentenced to jail. Oh, man. 6.30 in the morning, the wind is uh, pretty stiff out there. Um, it's not a paddle day yet. I think it will die down in an hour or so. I hope so. I want to move forward. Yep. Likewise a maiden fair. So tell me. Where are we? Well, we're in Seaford, which is part of Yorktown. How long have you lived here? We've been here about six years. Six years. Um, I feel like it's very peaceful out here. Yeah. And you have 15 acres. Mm -hmm. So, so where's your next holiday? Next holiday here? Yeah, where are you going to go next holiday? Well, we are going to... We do like a Disney Universal for a week. I, yeah. I'm ready to do something different, but... What about Norway? <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. No? <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, I'm just gonna go and knock in this house and see if anyone's home. Uh, let know I'm gonna rest on the uh, rest on the sand here. Sometimes yeah. people are private and they don't like it. I just went to the neighbors and said, hey, I'm gonna rest on your beach. And they invited me in, we started talking. And before you knew it, I decided not, this is a good place to spend the day. I had time to film and we went out and ate. They gave me a bed. So what are you making there? Uh, how are you on your iron consumption? Are you a vegetarian or not? No. Good. Um, you have any idea where you are on your nope. iron and your? Nope. Okay. Well, this is your iron uh, pill. Okay. It's called pate. Oh yeah, liver pate. Mm -hmm. oh, I love liver pate. The law was passed in 1975 to require school districts to provide educational services to kids with disabilities. Prior to that point in time, if a child was, let's say, was in a wheelchair or had cerebral palsy or had severe dyslexia, he was not allowed to attend school. And so, Can you tell me a bit about the books and why you're doing this? Well, the, the books are uh, about special education law and advocacy. There's the one set of books is, is what the law is. The other set of books, how to get school districts to provide services for kids when they believe that they don't have the funds to do it, that they can't do it, even though the law requires them to do it. Who stands up for the, for the young people with disability? The parents. The parents. That's about the it. The families. The families. But, um, they're, but they're struggling against the school system. They're struggling against to, to get their rights that the federal government has given. Is that correct? And a lot of the, the laws, there's the education law, but there are anti-discrimination laws. So what young people run into a lot is decisions being made that they will not get this or not get that. And those decisions are based on the fact that they have a disability. So mm -hmm. these are discriminatory. So how do you feel these books have changed the attitudes of uh, educators or schools or? Information is always power. If they know what to do, mm -hmm. that, that there are things that they can do, and they'll likely be successful at that point. After talking to you today, I felt that it's very, you're very close to the theme of my tour, Reverse the Bad. Do you, do you sometimes feel that you're reversing the bad in what you're doing? I don't think there's any question that we are having a significant impact and opening the doors to services for the kids with disabilities by empowering the parents. Yeah. How do you feel, Pam, what, when you've done what you've done? How does it make you feel to make life more informative for people? How do you feel? How does it make you feel? Like I'm doing what I was put on this earth to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It always feels good to know that you have helped other people, that you know concretely that you have made their life less difficult and given them tools to be able to navigate the waters yeah, and the situation yeah. is there's it's one of the best feelings probably in the world i would think <laughs>
kilometer og vi får se hvor langt det kommer. Ok, så jeg ville virkelig ønske å gjøre det til Smith Marina men jeg vet at en storm er oppfølging og jeg besluttet bare å ta en liten stopp jeg har pulet inn til en beach og jeg er rett ved siden av et hus og det ser ut som det er noe som skjer der så jeg bare går der og sier at jeg bare vil rette meg en stund på din beach og de sier, hva gjør du? hvor er du? hvor er du fra? bla 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 og før jeg vet det, jeg er her akseptet inn til dette weekend gathering for a group of college students who went to Bridgewater College like 40 years ago. I think I could stay with you for a while. They're all my age, 60, 60-ish, and uh, it's a reunion. They have it every, every year for the guys who are on the third floor of the dormitory, and they call it THC. So I've got nothing more to say that I'm, I'm going to spend 24 hours with them. And anyways, this is a recap of what has happened uh, thus far with the THC, and it's called the Flagpole 2023 Gathering. Okay, what's, what's Flagpole 23? What's the flagpole? Flagpole is the top of a mountain on the West Virginia, Virginia line that we used to have parties in. And what year, what year was this? 1975 through 82 or 3. Hi, Buck. Jesus, he look he was skinny there. Oh my god. Who's that? Buck? Buck. What is this drink? This is a Chesapeake Bay Cheers. oyster fresh. It is cocktail sauce and Tito's vodka. And an oyster. Yes. And an oyster in it. And you yeah. don't chew it. Raw. Right on down the hatch. Right on down, down the hatch. Down the hatch. Oh boy, okay. Down the hatch, okay. don't taste it. Just keep it going. <laughs> How did it taste? Oh no. <laughs> Smack me up the side of my head. You got two a little bit. They are good. Okay. You got to shake them. Shake it up. Shake and bake. There's already half. Shake and fry. You got to get them in. This is good. This is the key. You're going to try them, Mark, because they taste good. Yes. Okay. Carol Barrel. Go, go, go. Hold on. You're doing the opposite. You want, you're saying yeah. You're like, All right, you see, roll it that way. Okay, what, 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 is, what, what is this game called? Skittles. So what, what's the object of the game? To get it out here. Every pin has a value. 10. Okay. 10. 50. 100. So this is venison chili, and how did you make it? This is loin, yeah, which is of the venison, yeah, and I have a meat grater. Okay. So I grated it and made, you know, ground venison like hamburger. And then there's a lot of beans in here. 
So it's, it's ground venison. Come <laughs> on. 